about uh, 18 minutes to make a video before I catch my bus. <laughs> I uh, trust I have a, a good spot. Good sound, not good picture. I guess that would be a fair assessment. Hard day, hard day. Yeah, I got about uh, 15 minutes here, so. Decided by bus pass today just to. I've been staying very close to home, and the medicine has been like you know, try to try to increase your sense of movement. So I thought the bus pass was was a good choice. That's uh, that would be a squirrel. Who has noticed me? But he's the only one who has. <coughs> Perhaps my exhaustion, my sheer exhaustion, gives me away. I'm not sure about this neck thingy. <laughs> like somebody gave that to me. I was like. I'm trying it. It actually works pretty good. So I'm going to get a bit stoned and, and rest. I have not had a lot of time to rest today. It's been, it's weird, the word laborious came to me this morning and I thought, it's actually been a laborious day, but <coughs> I've seen a greater variety of fruiting mushrooms than I ever have in my entire life. I have been treated to six different species, seven different species of mushrooms, all shapes, colors, and sizes. From the shaggy mane to the Amanita muscaria to, I don't know. To, uh, I don't know what, so. I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get some uh, liquid. Get some water in me. As I sit here, I see a few mushrooms, tabletop. There's some over here. I haven't seen them all day. Some over there, behind me, down here. Oh. There's one that's fallen over, so you can see it. In honor of this day, in honor of the sun. Okay. Oh. Smells lovely. It's fragrant. It smells fragrant. How many minutes are we at? Four and a half? Okay. Yeah, I gotta say, 
That is a sweet, sweet smell. I'll put that on my altar. Mm. That is a sweet, sweet smell. Oh, I see the squirrel. Just jumped out. And there's a golden retriever. It kind of smells over. It's funny, I, there's a darkening forest, and I just looked right at the squirrel. Laborious day. <sighs> Seen a lot of mushrooms. Um, deep thoughts, definitely deep thoughts. Not very vocal, which is rare for me. But uh, the signs of hagalas all around me, and just combating sickness on a certain level. <laughs> so, to to every life, a little discomfort may come. Not even like a cold or a flu, just just whatever evil. <laughs> Excess, uh, maybe excess yin, maybe excess yang. I don't know. You can be as clinical as you want to be with it. Just maybe it's just a process of growth. But Jera came into the rooms today, and I'm very pleased. And I uh, buying that bus pass, and just I think I'm going to head out along the uh, the Nimo coast tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, just uh, the movement is good to me. Movement is good to me, and uh, if I get moving, that would be good. It's been, been good to, to spend time close on the estuary to uh, the uh, Little Qualicum River, um, seeing the eagle introduce herself into my life again. And I hope we'll find a female counterpart um, in, the coming, in the coming months. It is an actual uh, goal of mine uh, to hone in on a feminine companion. So wish me luck. A hunting we will go. And we'll see. And if not, maybe I'll just make my peace with my solitude. It's all its all a sexual existence, if you just pay attention. I don't, I don't mean to be pitiful, but it is it isn't a sexual existence. We all have times. People, everyone has times in their lives when they're by themselves and not. And maybe more or less. And, and uh, maybe that makes a nice relationship all the more dear. But I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive. I remember catching this early sense of, you know, life is your relationship. This girl I knew once said to me, you know, said, Landon, your, your life is the love of your life. And uh, she made it sound as though that was unique to me. Uh, and a lot of strongly psychic people, they find, they may sometimes find themselves at liberty to say something to me that they wouldn't say to themselves. But why not be honest about the fact that your life is your first love. And whoever comes into your life uh, becomes the love of your life in so much as they become your life, your whole life. And that if we could become someone's whole life, isn't that a beautiful thing? Not in a narcissistic way, just a, the beauty of it all. I'm, I'm assuming everyone is a full uh, participant in this and, and just feeling really great and dignified all those things, and two people being each other's whole life. A book of life open to interpretation, so that as we grow, we may find new strength. And uh, new paths. I have things I could talk about, I don't know if I will. I talked, I think I made a video today about celestial biology and literature, uh, the substance of life. Not, I, I went from three to four to five dimensions, but I don't think I would be a stickler on the numbers myself. <laughs> Just the, a sense of the substance of life, the story of life, and the meaning of life. Much of which we tell ourselves, and included in this dimensionality of a sort of a literary take on celestial biology is that we are always telling ourselves a story. If anyone's ever taught us anything, they've, t they've encouraged us to tell ourselves a certain kind of story. Now, it's important to honor the power of this principle, not to use it to say that uh, because we tell ourselves stories, certain things are necessarily false. 
are necessarily bad. I think there is a good deal that is bad about the stories that we're forced to tell ourselves. But I don't think it serves us to paint everything with that brush. Inasmuch as we will all wish to retain the liberty to protect our sacred stories. And the stories we've told ourselves. And in every way that we've told ourselves those stories, which is what knowledge is, or learn to tell those stories, that, that's vital. It is. And um, it's vital sometimes in a good way, and it's vital in a bad way, depending on how that storytelling function, that self-story started. And uh, you could view the self-story as something that's wounded and making it through the battlefield of life. You could see it as a warrior. You could see it as a princess warrior. You could see it as a good citizen. You could see it as a pure... Uh, male or female energy, you could see it as a glob of everything that is in harmony with nature and society, as only the very essence of both could be. And there's a nice silence there. Oh, I've been waiting for that all day. I haven't quite, didn't quite get comfortable today, so that's all right. We got some things done, though. In the story, the meaning, and the substance of life, we are making meaning. And everything we know, even if we're lied to, we've on some level told ourselves a story. And it's not that this should undermine any world view. It shouldn't undermine the world. It should strengthen it. That there is a time and a place to examine our deepest assumptions. With, if, 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 if the purifying factor of the imaginative concept is nothing is necessarily true, and that anything we think of as knowledge or the story we've learned to tell ourselves, which among, if you were to lay all the different kinds of TV shows and movies and stories of, of history and anthropology and, and uh, propaganda, you name it, even just the, the anatomically deviated ways that men and women and transvestites are presented, in all kinds of ways, it's very, very broad. Um, you overlay them and all their differences, but you would find common themes in the story in every case that you are telling yourself at a deep, deep level. And in any case, it may be that you hate yourself and that you hate everyone else, but that if you do that effectively enough, we can call that love. We can pass that off as love. And I think that's a lot of the story people have told themselves. It sometimes looks that way. But again, I think there's abstract functions in the meaning that we make of life, and our brain is suited to doing that so much that it leads me to believe that it is a vital function of life itself. That life is made up of meaning and the making of meaning as much as any substance. And time itself, what I call the fourth dimension, is, is the existence of a story that may or may not be meaningful. Changing different substances. I think I've got to start making a move. Oops.
use my new bus pass. <laughs> Thank you for listening, as always. And so uh, it's all rather meaningful, or, or just the fact that it can be, I think, is important. That everything is a story, and you can see yourself in that story in different ways, and come into to different types of natural harmony within that story. You're, you're at liberty to put yourself at ease with respect to the story. And the story moves, and it's difficult, and it gets better. And when it's able, able to comprehend as much as we ostensibly have all kinds of violence, but in order to reduce that violence, you have to know more about the story of your life when you make that story. And even if making that story for yourself butts up against things that have come in and invested time and energy in sort of taking up space in the loam of the making of stories that makes up a part of your own brain development. 